the moon, our nearest neighbor in space, had been extensively observed and photographed in December 1968, when the Apollo 8 astronauts, Borman, Lovell, and Anders, journeyed to within 70 miles of the lunar surface. From their relatively close vantage point, the astronauts obtained detailed photographs of the moon and of potential landing sites for future manned missions. The historic Apollo 8 mission had demonstrated the capability of manned space flight to lunar distances, to orbit the moon, and to return safely to Earth. To fulfill this nation's goal of landing men on the moon, one spacecraft element remained to be tested in the manned flight program. The critical manned operational test of the lunar landing vehicle, the lunar module, was the primary objective of the 10-day Earth orbital mission of Apollo 9. The lunar module is a two-stage vehicle designed to soft land two American astronauts on the moon. The lower section, the descent stage of the module, will be used to control the actual lunar landing and serve as a platform for liftoff. The upper section, the ascent stage, will be used to lift off from the moon and return the astronauts to the orbiting command module. Apollo 9 was the first mission in which the full three-module Apollo spacecraft, consisting of the command and service modules and the lunar module, was launched as part of the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle. The command and service modules had been flown previously on two manned missions. The lunar module had been tested alone during an unmanned orbital mission. Following the mating of the three-module Apollo spacecraft of the Saturn V, the combined 363-foot space vehicle was readied. Then, on January 3rd, moved to Launch Pad A at Complex 39 of the Kennedy Space Center. While Apollo 9 primarily demonstrated the performance of the lunar module, through space maneuvers and engine firings, it also proved the compatibility of the command service module and lunar module to perform combined operations typical of a lunar mission. The Apollo 9 mission also demonstrated again the performance of the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle, the astronaut crew, and the worldwide mission support facilities. The final countdown of the Apollo 9 space vehicle was begun by the Kennedy Space Center launch team on February 26th. In mid-count, a three-day hold was called when the crew physician detected that all three Apollo 9 astronauts had minor colds and sore throats. The final countdown was resumed on March 1st. Because two of the Apollo 9 crew, James McDivitt, the command pilot, and Russell Schweikert, the lunar module pilot, were to transfer from the command module to the lunar module during the flight, they wore heavier spacesuits, equipped for activity outside of the spacecraft. David Scott, the command module pilot, wore a lighter weight spacesuit. On the morning of March 3rd, the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle stood ready for its mission. The flight crew arrived at the White Room and prepared to enter the Apollo spacecraft about three hours before liftoff. As the countdown proceeded smoothly, the launch director ordered the Apollo access arm moved from the spacecraft and the launch escape system armed. In the launch control center, a number of NASA officials who are responsible for the manned space flight program, the Apollo Saturn space vehicle, and the launch operations closely monitored each step of the terminal countdown. The vice president of the United States was one of the prominent guests at Kennedy Space Center to witness the Apollo 9 launch. As with the three previous Apollo Saturn V launches, the countdown reached ignition precisely on schedule.
Apollo 9 rose from its launch pad at exactly 11 a.m. on March 3, 1969. Within seconds, the space vehicle passed through a dense cloud formation at 4,500 feet. Oh, and pitch program are in now to put Apollo 9 on the proper flight azimuth and attitude. Apollo 9, you're go all the way. Everything looks good. Roger. As seen here from airborne cameras, the five engines of the first stage operated with intolerances, boosting the six and one half million pound space vehicle to an altitude of 40 miles. Engine shutdown and separation of the first stage then occurred. A six minute, seven second burn of the second stage propelled Apollo 9 to an altitude of 121 miles and a speed of 15,000 miles per hour. At eight minutes, 44 seconds, the third stage was ignited for the first time and then burned for two and one half minutes to place itself and the spacecraft into a near circular orbit of 118 miles. During the second revolution, the command service module separated from the third stage, maneuvered 180 degrees, and maintained station keeping for one half hour. While passing over the United States, the command module docked with the lunar module. After assuring that the tunnel joint between the two spacecraft was rigid, and after checking all systems, the astronauts separated the entire Apollo spacecraft from the third stage. A short burn of the spacecraft main engine maneuvered it 2,000 feet away from the third stage. The engine of the third stage was then reignited for a second and third time, increasing its speed to an Earth escape trajectory. The stage was thrust into solar orbit in order to avoid later recontact with the spacecraft. On the second day of the mission, the crew fired the spacecraft's main engine three times which placed them in an elliptical Earth orbit of 125 miles by 312 miles. These maneuvers shifted the spacecraft so as to obtain proper lighting for the rendezvous maneuvers conducted later in the mission. At the same time, the burns also reduced the command service module weight to enhance possible rescue of the lunar module crew after separation of the two spacecraft. The lunar module systems were checked out and evaluated on the third day. Lunar module pilot Schweikert's motion sickness and other flight activities caused the crewmen to be delayed one and one half hours in the actual transfer. McDivitt and Schweikert entered the lunar module through the tunnel at 43 hours into the mission and activated the lunar module systems for the first time. The first television transmission of the lunar module interior was initiated at 46 hours into the mission. The seven and one half pound television camera was a new model that will be used on the lunar surface and had not been used on previous missions. Following a three hour check of the lunar module operating systems and deployment of the landing gear, the descent engine, which will be used for lunar landing, was fired for the first time under control of the lunar module autopilot. Manual throttling was demonstrated during the burn, as well as attitude control of the lunar module. These maneuvers are essential for last minute corrections before touchdown on the lunar surface. At the conclusion of the tests, and after shutdown of the lunar module systems, the astronauts returned to the command module. The main engine of the spacecraft was then fired for the fifth time to circularize the orbit for the lunar module rendezvous later in the mission. On the fourth day of the mission, the crew again entered the lunar module, actuated and checked its operating systems. As Apollo 9 passed over the United States on its 46th revolution, Schweikert emerged through the lunar module front hatch onto the porch to begin a 38-minute period of activity outside the spacecraft. During this activity, Schweikert retrieved a thermal sample from the exterior of the lunar module and evaluated the effectiveness of the lunar module handrails. He reported excellent results, stating that he could maneuver himself to any position and remain there with ease. 
He also reported that his suit was cool and comfortable at all times while outside the spacecraft. At the same time, David Scott partially emerged from the command module hatch to retrieve a thermal sample from the surface of that module. The lunar module pilot photographed Scott and the command module. After Schweikert moved back into the lunar module, he tested the television camera for 15 minutes. The transmission was received by ground stations at Goldstone and Merritt Island. Picture and voice quality were excellent. Oh, that's a, you're coming through loud and clear, Rusty. Crazy, you're reading voice now. Okay, we're in the process of recharging the bliss. Uh, we recharge it with oxygen, and uh, we've just put in the water, and we're going to bend now. Lehman CSM has band flight. Raj. Uh, Raj, your picture is good. We can see you loud and clear. Going down the checklist there like a good pilot. Right. The critical rendezvous maneuvers between the lunar and command modules were scheduled for the fifth day. The rendezvous exercise began with another check of the activated lunar module systems by McDivitt and Schweikert. Then, on direction from mission control, astronaut Schweikert fired the lunar module's small maneuvering engines and slowly separated from the command module. For the first time, a manned lunar module was operated in space solely on its own power. Following operational tests, McDivitt and Schweikert prepared to fire the lunar module descent engine. Approximately three miles from the command module, a maneuver was initiated to thrust the lunar module into a simulated lunar orbit and rendezvous trajectory. After separating to a range of 86 miles, lunar module staging was initiated using the small maneuvering engines. The ascent stage engine, which will be used for liftoff from the moon, was then ignited and burned for several seconds. The manned ascent stage closed in along its rendezvous trajectory with a command module. This was the most critical maneuver of the entire mission. Since the lunar module is not capable of entering the Earth's atmosphere, the two astronauts had to rejoin the command module for return to Earth. After a separation of almost six hours, and after traveling more than 100 miles from each other, the Apollo 9 command service module and the ascent stage of the lunar module successfully rendezvoused on schedule at an imaginary point in space. Station keeping was maintained at a distance of 100 feet for photography of the spacecraft. Successful docking of the lunar module with the command module was completed at 98 hours and 59 minutes into the mission. After the crew returned to the command module, the lunar module ascent stage was again separated. By ground command, the ascent engine was reignited and burned to depletion to place the stage in an orbit of 4,312 by 143 miles. Since the lunar module life support systems are designed to last approximately five days, all lunar module tests had to be conducted early in the mission. During the remaining five days in orbit, the pace became more relaxed. Time was devoted to navigation sightings, general crew flight experience, and to Earth terrain photography. Special attention was given to previously unphotographed areas in the higher latitudes. These included the east coast of the United States from Norfolk to Long Island, Cape Hatteras on the Carolina coast, the expanding cities of the New South, Atlanta, Georgia, Birmingham, Alabama, and Charleston, South Carolina. A striking view of the Grand Canyon in the southwestern United States was also photographed. Clearer views of previously photographed areas were obtained, including the Southern California coastline and the home of the astronauts, Houston, Texas. On the ninth day of the mission, High winds and heavy seas developed in the planned prime recovery area zone in the Atlantic Ocean. To avoid these conditions during splashdown, an alternate recovery zone 540 miles to the south was selected by mission control and the Apollo 9 crew. The new recovery zone 
required one additional orbit of the Earth, the 152nd, and added 26,000 miles and 98 minutes to the flight. On the final day of the mission, a 12-second burn of the main spacecraft engine was begun over Hawaii, slowing the spacecraft to deorbit velocity. Following the burn, the command module separated from the service module and entry was begun at 400,000 feet over the United States. The descent of Apollo 9 was photographed from its recovery ship, the USS Guadalcanal. Apollo 9 splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean at 12.01 Eastern Standard Time, 300 miles northeast of Puerto Rico. Recovery of the crew and spacecraft marked the end of a critical mission which qualified the last remaining element of the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle, which is required for the lunar landing. The historic six and one half million mile Earth orbital flight of Apollo 9 successfully demonstrated all of the techniques and maneuvers required for landing on the lunar surface, liftoff, and rendezvous and docking with a command module in lunar orbit. This experience, in addition to that gained on the lunar orbital mission of Apollo 8 and the long duration Earth orbital mission of Apollo 7 demonstrated the capabilities of the entire Apollo Saturn V space vehicle, the crew and mission support facilities. All needed to fulfill this nation's commitment to land men on the moon and return them safely to Earth prior to 1970.